Hello again, it's me, Sarah from Water Child Tarot. Thank you for coming back. And as promised, I wanted to do just a quick review of the books that I read um, this year. I did uh, extract the individual reviews for each of them and posted them on my channel. So you can find all of my uh, tarot related book reviews that I did in for 2023 here on the channel. Um, but I just wanted to do sort of a summary uh, video. Someone had mentioned that they would be interested in that. And um, so I'll just go through my top five, um, you know, briefly here. So, and I, I have these in order, basically. Um, and, and there's two that are sort of guidebooks, and then there's three that are more general. Um, so the first one, uh, or number five, would be a Dame Fortune's Wheel Tarot by Paul Hewson. Um, this goes with his Dame Fortune's Wheel Tarot deck, which I also have. And I wanted to read this because I have the deck, and it's been sitting on my shelf, and I hadn't really done a lot with it. Um, the reason it's only number five is because I think this is quite special to, specialist. Um, you would really want to have the deck to go with it, and it would just require a level of interest in something that was unconventional. So you can see here, for example, this would be the Two of Wands, and, you know, this guy doesn't look particularly happy or in control of the situation. Um, and, for example, the keyword is sadness, which does not go with the Golden Dawn interpretation of Dominion. Uh, chagrin, melancholy, displeasure, mortification, temper, disagreement, sourness, affliction, passing, or permanent. So um, just from that single example, you can see that this is a very different uh, approach to tarot, and some of the default meanings are you know, completely different from uh, Rider White Smith or, or Thoth or other Golden Dawn-based decks. Um, and I like it for the reason that it shakes me up. Um, it is actually based in a historic approach, but that a historic approach is uh, more cardamancy style readings and readings, uh, interpretations that Atea uh, had in his earlier writings in the, 17, in the 18th century, so 1700s on tarot. So if you're looking to sort of get a new flavor, break out of a rut, uh, maybe get a little bit of tarot history, which he does include in here, um, I can recommend this this guidebook. This is the larger guidebook that you can get separately. There is also a booklet that comes with the deck itself, but of course it's more condensed and it doesn't have all the information that this guidebook does. So this is in print and it is from uh, Los Carabeo, so wherever you buy Los Carabeo decks you should be able to get this book as well. The next book I want to recommend is the Alfred Douglas The Tarot book, The Origins, Meanings, and Uses of the Cards. Um, this deck is illustrated by David Sheridan, so it's known as the Sheridan Douglas um, Tarot uh, deck and book. I traded away my copy of the deck and the, um, so it's a, it's a re-release. The family is still printing the deck and you can get the deck and a copy of this book from their website. And I traded away that set to um, someone who was willing to trade me their Blood Moon Tarot, which I really wanted. So um, I don't have the deck anymore, and that's fine. It's it's You can see from these sample illustrations, it's very simplistic, and it's very stylized, and it's not really my taste. Um, but what I like is Alfred Douglas's uh, look at tarot. He's got a very um, clear and no-nonsense approach to tarot history here. Um, and doesn't muddy it up with, you know, myths and legends that the occultists kind of uh, made up in their own way. Um, he ties it in with um, archaeological fact. And he uh, also provides a lot of divinatory meanings from different sources. And so you get this rich blending of, you know, well, the, you know, the Marseille occultist interpretation is this, and the RWS is that, but the cardamantic one is over here. Um, and just how these things can kind of work together and enrich your readings. And um, the book does have, you know, outline versions of the artwork. And so you can you can understand what he's talking about, even though you don't have full color here. The um, You can understand what he's talking about in the descriptions. And then there's a, a fairly hefty section on spreads, 
um, and on using the tarot for different kinds of readings, you know, spiritual readings or fortune teller kind of guidance readings and that kind of thing. So just be for the breadth, um, for the breadth, the historical accurate accuracy and the different interpretations to kind of, again, give you something different to chew on. Um, I can recommend the tarot, the origins, meaning and uses of the cards. And again, this is still in print from the family. Um, but I found this copy, which was published by Penguin Press. Um, it's kind of a falling apart paperback, but I found it on, um, you know, an online used bookseller for like $3 with $3 shipping. So you can find inexpensive copies of, of various uh, editions of this if that's appealing to you. Speaking of things being in or out of print, um, the next book I want to recommend is Power Tarot by Trish McGregor and Phyllis Vega. And this was out of print for a long time. It was originally released in the 1990s, and but it is now back in print. And so you can get this from major booksellers. Um, this book uh, has a whole section in the front that is the author's um, kind of interpretations of the cards. They don't do any tarot history, um, but their own interpretations of the cards in various um, uh, subject areas or, or settings. So they, they give you um, what the Knight of Cups, for example, might read in, in a reading generally, uh, in work, in romance, in finances, in health, and in spirituality and empowerment. And so I think that what that does, especially for the beginning reader, is it gets them to think about the dimensions of a card and not just one fixed meaning, one fixed keyword, but how, how do the cards play out in different scenarios, in different contexts. So I like it for that. And I also like it for the um, 100 plus spreads in the back. So if you like working with spreads, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but, but the spreads are very specific and they're aimed at answering specific questions. So I find this a very um, utilitarian book for that reason. Um, and uh, like I said, it is back in print. So Power Tarot, and then the subtitle is More Than 100 Spreads That Give Specific Answers to Your Most Important Questions. So, and it certainly does that. I've, I've used this with friends and enjoyed reading uh, with it. Um, now, if you're not into spreads, you might appreciate the work of the next author. Um, so my number two book to recommend is The Power of the Trumps and Pips by Camille Elias. And um, this is an omnibus edition, so she, she did publish originally The Power of the Trumps and then The Power of the Pips separately, and this is them together. Um, I'm not sure if this is still available on her website, but um, I will link to her website uh, and you can check that out. Um, she is an interesting one, and I wasn't sure where to place her. I was going to place her at number five because she's kind of, kind of an acquired taste, and I wouldn't even necessarily say that this book is really about tarot. It's more about Camille Elias's philosophy, generally. Um, but she gives you a lot of very interesting things to think about. And, you know, I, I can recommend books that really stir up uh, what you've learned and challenge you to think for yourself, challenge you to open yourself up to your own intuition, your own creativity, um, especially when it comes to divination, because otherwise, what are we doing? We're regurgitating other people's truths. We're regurgitating uh, something that made sense to someone 20, 30, 50, 100 years ago. And it's, that's not really useful. And so I think even though a lot of what she says here rubs me the wrong way. It rubs me the wrong way in a productive way. And it, and it helps me think and break out of my um, kind of stodginess and, you know, some of the some of the go-to meanings that I have for cards. She's like, throw all that out. Throw it all out and just look at the pictures, read the cards, see what the function of the cards is. You know, what is, what is this person trying to do? What are they trying to say? And, um, and it's really refreshed my reading. So I appreciate her... Um, I appreciate her writing quite a bit. So I would recommend that one. And then my number one recommendation probably won't be uh, too surprising if you watched some of my other reviews, um, but that would be the Untold Tarot book, um, The Lost Art of Reading Ancient Tarots. And this is by Kathleen Matthews. And again, she, she leans strongly away from memorized meanings and a lot of the occult approach to tarot adding on, you know, 
zodiac information and Kabbalistic information and, and all these extra associations that really aren't necessary. Um, you can read tarot in a very clear and direct way without all that stuff. Um, and, you know, Camille Elias talks about that and Kathleen Matthews talks about that. Uh, Kathleen Matthews also talks a lot about very specific techniques um, for kind of pulling meaning out of cards. You know, if, if you read the numbers in this kind of a way or that kind of a way and, and they present themselves and here's how they talk to each other um you can you can kind of i don't know it's like a it's like putting your tarot readings through a food processor um maybe might be a good way to describe it blending things together chopping them up into tiny little pieces and reassembling them to get something fresh and interesting um it's it's somewhat hard to describe the qualities of these books without you know reading from them but um but, but that's what these books do to my brain. And again, I appreciate them. Um, Kathleen Matthews also has, you know, she has some tarot history in here, but really it's, it's more the pedal to the metal. It's how do you use historic uh, imagery to read in the modern day? How can we make sense out of how people used to read and do fortune telling uh, with how we live our lives today? How, how can we use, um, if you like historic decks like I do, how can you use that old art to talk about things happening in in modern times. And um, again, so for those reasons, I really recommend Untold Tarot. Um, if you are thinking about like starting a Marseille journey or whatever, I would start with this book. And I might even compare other books to this because to me, this is the most clear, the least bogged down, requires the least memorization of, of any of the other books that I've read on the Marseille. So um, I think this is a great one. If you're only going to read one book about, about, um, kind of non writer weight smith reading techniques, this would be the one that I would recommend. So, um, so yeah, so that one's really great. Um, I hope that this video was helpful to you. Um, and I want to thank you all for coming along uh, on my journey through, uh, you know, reading 13 different tarot books in 2023. It was very motivating and kept me on track to be able to share all those with you. Um, and, and to get through my shelf of tarot books that, you know, might have otherwise gone largely unread for another whole year. So it was very rewarding for me. And, um, and I hope that you got something out of it. Um, and thank you again for joining me. I, uh, don't know what my next video is going to be. It might be a while until I, I put out another one, but until then, I'll just say, enjoy, uh, your readings, enjoy your, your cardamancy and, um, maybe uh, look for an excuse to learn something new in 2024 about reading tarot. Um, I've, I found it very enriching myself. So uh, have a great, um, a great time until I see you again. Be well, and I'll see you in a bit.